This is episode 57 of the Steady Trade Podcast with your host, Tim Bowen. I would I would put a decimal point in there. <laughs> <laughs> and Steven Johnson. God, Tim's disgusted. <laughs> Today, Tim and Steven walk you through part seven of Tim Sykes' 14-part Trader Checklist video series. And then at the end, they review the homework assignment that they gave you at the end of last episode, episode 56. You remembered your homework. You you, you did do your homework right. Did you rate CVSI from August 6th, 2018? That was your homework assignment. Okay, if not, no problem. Tim and Steven do it for you. Now, if you're watching this instead of just listening, which is a good idea on this episode since there's a lot of chart analysis going on, just keep in mind that there was a problem recording the video from Tim and Steven, but we do have the video of the Tim Sykes Trader Checklist chart review. So you will see the charts, you just won't see the talking heads or the hairy armpits, as it should be. So let's just jump right in. Welcome back to the Steady Trade Podcast. We're continuing our series focusing on Trader Checklist. We, we have kind of went through the entire PREPARE acronym. Um, if you're somehow randomly stepping in or, or, or stumbling across this episode, not that it's required, but we do kind of suggest that you kind of jump back to the beginning of this series. I think we started out roughly episode 50 or 51. You'll, you'll see it in the title, but we kind of lay the groundwork based on Sykes laying the groundwork and then offer our interpretation of the prepare criteria that make up the psych sliding scale. And now I'm kind of excited for today because what we're going to do now, the rubber meets the road, you know, where where the the gravy hits the potatoes. Steven doesn't have a tank top on, so it's a good day. So, but what actually, what we're going to do today is actually apply the psych sliding scale. I think that, uh, you know, I, again, I think this is a great thing, and this is something I do every day in Stocks to Trade Pro. It's one thing to talk about abstract concepts, to talk about, you know, charts from five years ago, or to talk about news from a few years ago. I think the great value comes in actually applying this stuff, taking a ticker like we asked you to do last episode, evaluate it, repeat that, repeat that, repeat that. And the more times you repeat that process, the more likely you are to improve and kind of cement your abilities in doing that. Yep. Yep. And we'll, we will be, get that water down you, get that water down you. Yeah. We will be going through that. It's actually, it's actually, it's, it's alpha brain instant. Alpha brain instant. What the, what's alpha yes. brain instant? You're not, you, you're, you watch the Joe Rogan podcast and you don't know what alpha brain is. I takes that stupid brain shit, but I didn't think you'd be doing it. Yes, I have for years. Has it, has it, it also helps with, it also helps with back hair growth too. So. D- does it make any difference to your intelligence? Is it making you better? I think it works. Yes. Really? Yeah. Well, I don't know about intelligence, but I think it makes you quicker, um, without being like, you know, like meth, ad, meth methamphetamine quick, but I think it, you know, it, 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 I think it upgrades your hardware. I think it does help with memory. Now, like anything, like even like creatine, if you're lifting weights, I mean, it's, you're talking it's ne- single ne- digit ne- percent. Negligible, yeah, so. negligible. Yeah, I don't want to call it negligible, but it's not like you're a hundred percent better once you drink one of them. So uh, I've got to say, I was, uh, I've been doing some research, listening to some other podcasts and a lot of them aren't very good. Uh, and then I come, ac- <laughs> I come across this clip of you. When everybody is looking for these charts, what's going to happen when the, when the pattern matters. Like when that cool music's on in the background, you look pretty badass. <laughs> I don't know if that's what you're going for. Like, I, I like, I don't know. I don't know what magic the producer did, but like, I do have my unicorn kitty shirt on. Notice that. No, but I'm serious. I mean, I, I, had, I had two kind of revelations today. The first one was I was looking back at some old episodes and I thought I look like a bit of a dick when I wear a tank top. So I'm probably not going <laughs> pro- to do that again. Like, I didn't realize you guys were making fun of us. And I was like, fuck you. And then I was, well, I was remember, watching back and I was like, I look it, like a bit it, of a dick. It, it's not so <laughs> much the tank top. It's just that when you have the tank top on, you, for some reason constantly want to raise your arm above your head no, now, it's not you cool. don't do it 
You don't do it when you have a normal shirt on, no. but when you have the tank top on, you just constantly do it. Yeah, I look like a bit of a dick. And then I was looking like a dick, and then I saw you on that Instagram clip with that music, and I was like, oh, God, B- Bones trumping his. Not in the Trump Trump sense, but I was like, Bones trumping his. It's like, that's, that's rubbish. But anyway, yeah, I mean, let's, let's get into the clips. But anyway, a lot of the finance podcasts are crap. A lot of them are crap. Honestly, a lot of them are crap. A lot of them are people trying to be funny and they're not very funny. I hope people don't think that about us. I hope they're not like, oh, it's another podcast you're trying to be funny. <laughs> Actually, I mean? that, that's a great... Uh, if you're watching this whether or listening to it, if you're on YouTube or if you're watching it on the blog or on iTunes, shoot us a su- suggestion. You know, I actually... It's a great point, Stephen, because I we got two or three comments on this week's... On, on Monday's episode... We're recording this Tuesday, where people said specifically that they they liked the fun but informative format. Yeah, but so. I saw other people trying to be funny and like they're just putting on an act, and I'm like, I just want to say to them like, I'm I'm not putting on an act, motherfuckers. <laughs> just a bit of a maniac. No, there's no act here. But uh, yeah, anyway, just just a random observation. But do you want to? Let's not rate the podcast on the slight side and scale, but will it? Let's uh, let's read some stocks. Stocks, socks, socks. Not socks. Socks, stocks from America. All right. So we are roughly one hour from the market open, and I just wanted to do a quick video just to explain some of the stocks I'm watching and how they fit into uh, my seven indicator plan. Um, you know, I'm looking for big percent gainers always. Volatile stocks. Uh, this is Stocks to Trade, by the way. This is my platform that I use. You can see my watch list is here on the left-hand side. Uh, big percent gainers are over here. Uh, this is the chart of the, the stock that I'm watching. Here is the level two of the stock that I'm watching. Here's some recent trades, uh, pre-market trading. Uh, some of you guys only think, oh, you know, the stock market opens at 9.30 a.m. Eastern. Well, there's pre-market and after hours for the true degenerate gamblers. Uh, I don't really like to trade pre-market, but I use it as a guide. Uh, for example, PEIX you know, is up 11% pre-market right now. I don't care whether it's up 5% or 10% or even 20%. Uh, the fact is, is that it's up, and if you look at the recent news, you know, they just reported earnings. You can see here we have on Stocks of Trade some nice little uh, news alerts too, so you can see exactly when they reported earnings. And in reaction to earnings, this stock is spiking. So this is a potential earnings winner. I wouldn't call it an earnings winner yet uh, because it's just pre-market and the volume is very light. But so far, the reaction to earnings is pretty good. Um, So I'm going to be watching this stock when the market opens in an hour uh, to see if it can, can really continue. So a couple things in this clip that I want to focus on. So Sykes makes, you know, he kind of blows through it because he's used to using stocks to trade every day. But you notice what he did there. I mean, obviously, I'm a little biased. I'm I'm the lead trainer for stocks to trade. I think it's the best platform out there. But one of the reasons I love it so much is exactly what Tim explains there. We have everything for momentum traders, day traders in one window. Now, you can set up a lot of platforms similarly, but basically this was designed with Sykes specifications, my specifications. We asked other top traders like Gratani and Ducks, you know, Stephen Ducks uses stocks to trade every day as well, to how to position things, how to lay it all out so that you can make your decisions very quickly. And, and he kind of did that. He's like, hey, you watch list, top gainers. I got the news. I got the indicators on the chart. We've got the basics box. Tells you that this you know, isn't traditionally a low float stock. But if you look at kind of the bottom middle of your screen, you can see it's a 28 million float stock, which is on the lower end. It's not a traditional low float stock, which we consider less than 10 million. But it's still a low-ish float is kind of how I say it. So great thing you know definitely if you're watching this again obviously i'm biased but definitely go over to stockstrade.com we have a seven dollar trial for seven seven day trial for seven dollars no risk after that you can sign up you can check it out and you can see what sykes is looking at other point before i hand off to steven is i wanted to focus on the key point 
that that Sykes made that is very often misunderstood. He call he says this stock is currently an earnings winner. There's a very often misunderstood thing in in day trading when people say earnings winner everyone wants to assume that they blew out earnings you know they made a million a million 10 million they made a billion dollars whatever quite frequently an earnings winner in low price stocks i mean they can still be losing money but you have to remember that in day trading and momentum trading it's the reaction to the earnings that matter so even though this they they could they could have lost money and the stock would be gapping up and it would still be an earnings winner. Everybody, you might be like, wait, Tim, did you say that wrong? They lost money. How can they be an earnings winner? Well, if they lost less money than the market expected, that's a positive. And remember, in momentum stocks, day traders will latch onto any excuse to run a stock. So remember, the criteria for an earnings winner is a stock that has recent earnings, maybe last night, maybe the day before, maybe this morning, that is gapping up on volume. That's an earnings winner, and that's a stock that has a potential to run. Doesn't necessarily matter how good or bad that bottom line number actually is. Yeah, I mean, I think great points. Great points. Sound a little bit like you there. Uh, very good points, and I fully agree. And, and for me, I, I think if stocks are traders kind of it's the girl at the bar that I always wanted, but I could never have. It's, but like, so if, if, if you're that person, then with through stocks of trade, you can fill that void. It's very, it's very contemporary. It's very sexy. I'm not sure actually who did the design layout for it, but it's a very, very sexy um, and aesthetically, I don't know what the word is. And it's very functional in terms of, I always think of like Steve Jobs when he says, how can you get to where you want to go in as, as few clicks as possible when he was creating the iPhone and stuff like that. And I think with Stocks Trade, it's got a similar feel. And the reason why I like it is because in trading, and especially at the market open, 931, 932, 933, you need to react in seconds. And that's why people who follow alerts lose because th that few seconds makes the difference and the chasers lose against the guru. Everything's in seconds. Uh, so basically, it's very important to have one click, two click to get to where you want. So you can make the decision in seconds. You can analyze internally the stock in seconds. And uh, you can be on the right end of the trade or avoid it if there's a warning sign there. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that, that, again, I didn't design. I'm no designer. I had input on the design. But I think that is, I agree with you, one of the things they nailed was I think we really hit that intersection of having all the information you need without being ridiculously busy. I mean, I've used yeah. some other trading platforms in the past, and I mean – you fire them up and you don't even know where to begin. There's, there's yeah. flashing. Some of them play sounds. Some of them have like speech to text. I mean, it's like just all this stuff going on. No, but I mean, that's, that's the beauty as well as how can you be as functional as possible while still providing an outer face that screams less is more. And, and, I, and stocks of trade do it, which is, which is super cool. And it's, it's why I was always wanting to be a uh, part of, part of the, Part of the team. I never knew how to be a dick to get on the podcast, though. But anyway, let, let's let's go let's go to the next next clip. <laughs> Another hot play is this. Uh, where was it? EVOK right now. And EVOK. Uh, this is just a, a two day chart, so it's already you know nearly doubled from the one sixties all the way to the threes pre market. If you look at the news, you know there's uh, some SEC filings here, uh, an SC thirteen G filing. Uh, which basically just means that there are new investors who have uh, added to their position. I highly encourage you to watch uh, me and Michael Good's DVD called Learn to Read SEC Filings so you can learn what the different filings mean. Um, but for me, you know, when there's new investors, okay, that's a good catalyst. Um, you know, it's a potential buy, but at the same time, it's up a lot already. Um, and if you scroll out to you know, a, a longer term chart. This is not a good chart. Uh, you know, it was uptrending and then some, some serious, uh, you know, bad news here. And it looks like uh, their lead product failed. And so the stock dropped from 10 down to the two. So now maybe, you know, these investors 
uh, are seeing some value, but this is a very, very tough chart for me to ever really buy because uh, you know you have long-term shareholders who, frankly, just want to get out at any price, and they'll they'll be happy to sell into a spike because you know just the other day the stock was trading around a dollar, now it's two and a half. So if you were thinking about cutting losses, well, now's a good time to to do it because you know the stock is up so much. Uh, yeah, and I think for. For in terms of EVOC, that's a common common stock ticker in the, in the penny stock world that we're both familiar with, I guess. Uh, the, the, for me, I look at it in two ways straight away as a, as a short seller. Uh, in a new modern way since since recent changes in my strategy, but I immediately think, uh, what's the volume? I can see that straight away. What's the float? I can see that straight away. Make sure it's less than 10 million. And then the next thing I would always do immediately would be to check the news to see why it's up, and then straight after that, check the SEC filings. And I check the SEC filings just to check if there's a 4241B or there's an effect form, because that will immediately change my decision as to how how heavily I will short this. Yeah, and that's again, you know, obviously this kind of is another commercial, so I'll skip it quickly. But that's again a great feature of Stocks to Trade is all the SEC filings are right there. You saw live Sykes. Just it was, it was right there. All the information you need in one spot. So now what I like that he touched on here is basically the past performance in the Sykes sliding scale. So I don't know how Sykes ends up grading this one, but I can tell you this. If I was running the Sykes sliding scale on this, I would give it as a, maybe not a zero, but probably a five for past performance. I mean, as he mentions, when these stocks, I mean, you saw, if you, if you back up, if you're watching on YouTube, or you can always go over to steadytrade.com and see the YouTube video if you're, if, you, if you're listening on iTunes. But, I mean, re- huge gap down. Stock just got crushed. And you got to put yourself in the mindset of the other trader. So if you're thinking about buying this thing, put yourself in the mindset of the guy that's been a bag holder for months after that big gap down, you show up today and there's a 50% gap up or however much this stock was up that day, what would you do? I know what I would do. I would be selling because I would be like, thank God it's not at zero. It's up 50% today or whatever. So you got to think not only are you is, are, are, is one person going to do that? There's going to be thousands of people doing that. So if there is that much selling in a stock with bad past history on the psych sliding scale, what are the odds this stock really gets going today? In my opinion, very poor. You, could, you probably heard me in the clip. As soon as I saw that chart, I was like, yuck. Yeah, not, not a lot more to say there. Patton's bad sushi. It's about a five. Risk reward is along is terrible because it's not going to go any further. That wouldn't go down a lot. Five pattern risk. <laughs> what are the other indicators? Pattern at what time of day it is doesn't matter what time of day it is. It's not really important because it's a bad yeah it's a bad pattern yes. Yeah, so. uh, but that's the beauty of of the, of again having this criteria. You start. I mean, if you immediately recognize it's a bad pattern and you just kick it off your list. Remember. Once you, if, if you're great, if you're giving something a five on the past pattern, there's no sense even completing the scale because you recognized, okay, it's a terrible chart. Why would I even bother to break this down? Let's throw it down. Let's move it nah. on to the next stock. Just let's move on to the next clip as well because I don't want to give Evoc any more time of me day because it's a joke. Let's look at PEIX for a second. The pattern price, you know, as I said, it's not terrible, um, but you know, it's, it's not great. You know, it is a breakout above 660. So that's, you know, give that a few points. Um, if it came down to 660, I might be, you know, more enthusiastic right now. It's, it's probably a little overextended, uh, in the sevens. So it is a breakout. It is a multi-month breakout. Um, it has a decent, uh, long-term chart, but not great. And it's a little overextended past the breakout. So, on a level of 1 to 20, I will give this one a 12. Again, it's not an exact science. I'm just estimating. Uh, risk reward here at $7, I don't think it's that great. You know, if it came down to 660 uh, or 670, then it would have better risk reward because it would be closer to the breakout. 
That said, though, if it comes down to 660 or 670 from the current price at 7 ish, uh, well, then is it even going to be an earnings winner? So that's tough. I'll, I'll give this one, I'll split it down the middle. Risk reward is a 10. Uh, ease of entry and exit, you know, can I get in and can I, can I get out pretty easily? Um, you know, sorry, that was my, my E Trade Pro. I use E Trade Pro too sometimes. Uh, but on stocks to trade, um, uh, you know, I mean, I can probably get in and get out. I mean, you can see the volume here. The volume goes up uh, very nicely. Let's just say that. Um, you know, there's there's millions of shares traded. Let's look over the past year just to see the volume. You know, the volume gets up to like a few hundred thousand. So if I'm going to take a position of a thousand or two, um, you know, I can do that. So I'll give uh, the ease of entry and exit, I'll give it a, a seven. I don't know if it's a 10 yet because we got to see what the volume looks like. Does it have a past performance or history of spiking? Oh, man. And this is tough, too, because, you know, I also prefer low float stocks because they can really spike. They can really go supernova, especially right now. History of spiking, I got to give this a three. You know, it does not have a history of really going supernova. Um, so I, I can't rate that that highly. Uh, what time is it? Personal schedule? Well, you know, so this is going to change based on the time of day. Uh, but today I have all day to trade. Um, my personal schedule is is clear. But what time is it right now? You know, as I'm filling this out, it's pre-market, so I'm not going to trade it. Um, you know, I'll give this a, a 12 right now. Because um, I'm just watching. The reason in the catalyst, it's an earnings play. Um, so earnings plays, you know, that's one of the the catalysts that I like to buy. Um, but right now, you know, earnings winners haven't been the biggest winners. So I will give this a uh, six. And the market environment right now is ripe uh, for for trading. But again, not for really earnings winners. Uh, it's ripe for low flow market cap, low play, low. Market cap low float plays, um, and this is not one of them. So I'll give this one a six. So the value of the trade is a fifty-six, and that's about accurate. You know, it's it's a potential trade, um, but it's not anywhere close to being uh, you know a definite trade for me yet. So uh, this is pretty interesting, and I think it's very useful to actually see. Sykes break down this trade and that's why we wanted to include these clips and that's why we're featuring this because he basically you can see him walk through it he determines that this is not that great of a trade and you know I agree with him on some points I disagree on a few others but the biggest two I agree with him on is you know he was recording this in 2016 we're really in the same environment in 2018 where low float stocks are what really moves you heard me mention that a few minutes ago. PEIX at the time, you can see on his screen, I think it's 29 million float. It's not a low float stock. And then you see, and you feel free to jump back, the stock just really doesn't have a history of spiking. I mean, it, it goes up 20 cents. It goes up 30 cents. I don't want to day trade a stock. I mean, sure, if you got 1,000 shares, you make 30 cents, it's 300 bucks. You know, I'm sure a lot of you would be happy with that. But I want to trade stocks that go from 2 to 10 in a day, not from 7 to 7.30 in a day. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to buy it at 2 and sell it exactly at 8, but those are the types of stocks that you can really grow a small account, and you can trade them multiple times in a day. You can short sell them, et cetera. So I agree with most of Sykes grading, except I if you know just kind of doing it mentally i'd probably be more in like the 40s than even a 56 that he gives it yeah i mean this to me like when i'm on the challenge and i'm on the challenge webinars this to me looks like the type of stock that every user brings up is the next best play and like sykes are, are, are you are like no because it's not this or no because it's not that and you're like no because it hasn't got a history of running and, it, and the, the big giveaway for me is that it's got no real volume it's not breaking out on volume and it hasn't got a history of breaking it out on volume so it's just it's just another stock that's going to go nowhere uh but i did the sykes sliding scale the other day on a trade that i saw and i'm going to tell you i'm going to tell you the criteria and then tell me what mark you think i give it right 
Okay. I think it was CLST or CLSN. It, it was up 35%, 35 to 40%. It, it was okay pre-market. It traded a couple of hundred thousand shares. Uh, it's, it's a 15 million float about, but it, it had the entire float bagged. No, it was a 20 million float and the entire float was bagged. Like it traded like 40 million a month before it went up to six and it's now at two. Everyone's underwater. Everyone's panicked. It's up to 35 to 40%. I'm pretty meaningless news. I can't remember what the news was exactly. Uh, it's starting to, it's, it's up pre-market, but it's starting to fade and, uh, there are warrants. What kind of score do you think I gave it? Well, were you score were you scoring it as a potential long or, Defin- a, or definitely a short? As a short, definitely as a short. Oh, oh okay. Well, then, Quiet market. based on the cri- it's based on the cri- thousand pre market, just last yeah, hundred fifty thousand. So based on based on your criteria of it being a higher float stock, mediocre volume, it had spiked and failed in the past. You know, the, you said the news wasn't anything that was that wow. Everyone's I would think you entire float. Yeah, I, I would think you gave it a eighty or, or yeah or warrants as well yeah so I would think you gave it a very high score. Tim, go on. What score do you think I give it? What score do you think it got? I, well, I said eighty. I 80, said eighty. Tim. Yeah. Eighty-two. Ah yeah. yes. <laughs> it was an eighty-two. Like it, and, and it, by price and by <laughs> prices right rules as long you know closest without going over. That's a pretty that's a pretty solid guess. Eighty two, so. Tim. Like when I saw it and I didn't have any funds in my account, I nearly jumped off my balcony. <laughs> I nearly jumped off my balcony. I was like, ah I was like, it's an eighty two. It's not a five, it's not a six, it's not a seven, it's an eighty two. What that did is, it end up doing? What did it do that day? Fucking crushed. Crushed <laughs> <laughs> with no spike. Eighty two. It was an eighty two. Can you believe that? 82! Because I was like, do you know what it is? This is about a 70 because it's only up 18, 19, 20, 21%. Pushed to 35 at 929. It's like, ah! It's just gone to an 82. Uh, first 82 I've ever seen. They are a wild breed. <laughs> they are a wild, wild breed. You do not see 82s walking down the street. You do not see them walking down the street. Not, not every you day, I mean? that's for sure. You see a lot of 40s. see a lot of 50s. See a lot of 60s. Don't see many 30s. Don't see many 20s. <laughs> Equally, you don't see many 70s. You don't see many 60s and 70s. You do not see 82s, and you certainly don't see 90s. If you see a 90, run home and tell somebody. Do you know <laughs> or I mean? trade it. <laughs> or trade it with your entire account. If, 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 you see, if you see a 90, put your mortgage your house and put it on and run away and say, baby, we're going to the Bahamas. I've just and, and, found a 90. And this is where I need to remind you that the, he, us at the Steady Trade Podcast, we are not certified financial planners. We are not licensed financial advisors. We are uh, finance, entertainment, and educators. So do not take Stephen's advice to mortgage your house and put all of your money into a sketchy penny stock, even if it is a 90. I'm an 80s bounty hunter. Uh, I'm a bounty hunter for the 80s, the 80s, the 81s, the 82s. No, but you know what I mean? Like, if you find an 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10 girl in the pub, it's the same thing. Like, if you find an 8 out of 10, 80, 82, 8.2 out of 10, mate, you have found gold. That's a 50. No one cares about 50s. Sorry. Well, and that, you, know, you know, something we talk about it all the time on Steady Trade is, you know, is being, is being willing to wait for those. I mean, especially if you've got a small account and you're under the PDT, your goal is not well, first of all, you can't trade 10 times a day, but I mean, there's such a fallacy that the way to grow a small account is to trade like crazy. No, the way to gr- grow a small account is wait for stuff that meets your criteria. But also just learn how to grade the stocks, get a mentor who knows the system to, to double check your grades. And then once you get there, it's, it's, quite easy to have discipline not it's impossible to have discipline but it's very easy to think this is a 70 this is a 60 this is an 80 do you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah and, and, and I, you know that's accordingly. that's i think the value and that's why we're we're reviewing this is remember going back to the first episode i said you don't have to use exactly sykes criteria i've got different criteria we use in stocks to trade pro but the point is Use this as a beginning point and then, you know, maybe you stick with it, but make your changes, but have a process, you know, don't buy alerts, you know, don't buy stocks you see on Twitter, you know, don't do all this random stuff, 
have a process, track it, modify it, and that's how you get consistency. That's how you get steady. Boom. Uh, all right. So EVOK, you know, the pattern and the price, it has spiked recently, uh, just since literally this is yesterday afternoon from the ones to the three. So it has spiked. But again, remember the longer term chart is not, is no bueno. Uh, you know, this has that, that bad sushi example. So for um, the pattern and the price, this is not my pattern at all. I'm going to give this, you know, a three because it has spiked recently, but it's not my pattern. Uh, risk reward right now, you know, I don't even know where it's going to go. I mean, it's, it's already, um, I mean, it's downtrending so far pre-market right now, but it's already spiked. Let me go, let me show you, uh, you know, two days. So it's coming off the top here. You know, I guess you could say, okay, potential dip buy, and maybe it gets back to three. It does have the news. It does have the volume, and it also has a, a low market cap. So on this one, uh, risk-reward, you know, I'll give it a seven. No, I'll give it a ten. Split it down the middle. Ease of entry and exit, I mean, this is, is very volatile, uh, very liquid, so I'll give it a ten. I can get in and get out very easily. Past performance history is spiking. This is a bad one. I'm sorry because, again, it has that, that really bad, bad long-term chart. And that leads me to believe that, you know, long-term bitter shareholders are going to sell into this spike. Uh, what time is it? Personal schedule. Again, I have the whole day free to trade if I wanted to. Um, but right now, as I'm, you know, filming this and, and analyzing it, it's a little too early for me. Um, so I will give this uh, a seven. I'll give it an eight. Uh, reason catalyst, you know, it's up on new investors, which pretty good lately. You know, you have to look and see how other similar uh, plays have done recently. I'll give this a seven out of ten. And the market environment for this kind of a play is right because it's low flow. So this is a fifty-two. Um, and you know, again, this isn't an exact science, whether it's a 52 or a 56 or even a 60 or even a 40, it's, this is a guide to show you that it is not, you know, a great, great play right now. Um, you know, I 99% agree with this analysis. If anything, I might even score it slightly lower. Um, biggest, the, the only thing, in my opinion, the only thing good about this stock that day is it's 4 million float. And I think at the time Sykes was looking at it like 915, it had traded like five or 600,000 shares. Volume would have me interested. But when I see that news and I see that chart, I would, I call it, that's what I call a desperation play. I mean, if you're trading that it's cause you're desperate for action and that almost never ends well. I mean, you might make money on it, but I say this thing is 100% ignore. I would probably be 10 points even lower than Sykes. And keep in mind, you might be like, okay, here's another one that he scored bad. You know, why are you, you know, what's the value of scoring these bad? Remember, there's 16,000 publicly traded stocks. Every day, you know, especially in like fall and winter and spring, you might have 20, 30 plus stocks spiking early. Remember my, one of my favorite sayings that I stole, you know, he who chases many rabbits catches none. One of the biggest parts of being a consistent day trader is I call it, and I always do that. If, you, if you're in an STT pro webinar, you'd see me do it. I want to get stuff off my list. The faster I can move stocks off my list, in my opinion, the higher potential for me to be successful and trade a good setup that matches my criteria. So I think being able to quickly score a stock bad is a huge ability, a huge attribute. It's like, you know, if you're standing at the plate in a baseball game, being able to quickly recognize it's a ball and you just let it pass and you wait for that good one. Yeah, I mean, just out of my experience, I see so many people just trying to trade something for the sake of trading it. And when you go through this, when you go through this psych sliding scale, and, and I'm sure everybody agrees with Tim because it's 
when you go through it one by one, he makes valid points as to why he scored each one, and it's almost like we agree he's being a bit generous. And at the end of the day, it's a 50. It's a 50. And we were both kind of disgusted. We're like, it's a 50. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's not a 50. It's a 50. <laughs> um, but there's two things. I mean, one, you should analyze a trade before you actually trade it. Too many people jump in. And if you did do the prepare acronym, you would find out, oh, this is a 50. And if you can wait one or two more days to get a 60 or a 70, then, then that's, I mean, are you, you've got to think, are you really going to get profitable trading 50s? Are you really going to get especially, consistent trading fifties? Especially if you're under the PDT, because remember, you're limited to three day trades a week. Do you really want to use up? You know, today we're recording on Tuesday. Do you really want to use a day trade on Tuesday on a mediocre setup, and then come Thursday, Friday, you got no day trades, and then the seventy or the eighty walks through the door, and then you're like, "Oh no!" You know, you're you're like Stephen was when he saw CLSN and his funds were in transit. He's like, he's like, it's there, and I can't trade it, and that's what it's like under the PDT if you trade crappy setups and waste your day trades. Yeah, and and I mean, and that's the other thing. Like, that's what these these average mediocre forties, fifties, and sixties. I mean, we've been through the whole acronym. We've graded how you should rank each one and why each rank has its its numerical value. Now, the important thing to understand is what value is a good value. And these forties, fifties, and sixties, they are just there to make the eighties look special. In the nineties, God forbid you ever see one. Uh, and you've just got to realize forties, fifties, and sixties. They're just placeholders. To, to, to cushion the 80s and the 90s. And you should only really be trading the 80s and the 90s, especially if you're under the PDT. Agreed. 70s, well I'd say 70s as well. But Yeah. What's really difficult, though, is it's hard to know how do you grade the pattern and the price. I get it's hard. For new people who are just starting out, what pattern and price should I give it? Well, out of 20, it's, well, it's you know, tough. You need to learn. And it's and it's and, and I, nobody wants to hear this. It's screen time. But... It's screen time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. You know, I'm, I'm glad you showed up with your A game today. You know, it's it's. I Every say day. you got to look at you got to look at charts till your eyes bleed. You got to fill these sheets out. I mean, I've got six sheets I did today in a webinar for STT Pro that we broke down. I still do them. I've done ten thousand of these. So yeah, I wish I had a better answer, and nobody wants to hear it, but. It's just reps. It's nah. it's the Malcolm Glad it's the Malcolm Gladwell ten thousand hour type thing. So And you'll just have these random Eureka moments. Like I've always been terrible on the long side, but after seeing your swing strategy a few times, after seeing a lot of low floats just rip on people a couple of times, you start just thinking, Oh, I've seen this before and you will get that deja vu, oh I've seen this before. Be like the sixth sense, but you're not seeing dead people, you're seeing stock stock charts <laughs> winning. <laughs> but yeah, so next. Um, but yesterday, you know, it, it kind of held two all day and I thought about dip buying it, you know, cause two act sh should act as support. But aside from that big morning spike, I mean, it really couldn't bounce that much. Like even though it used two as support, you know, it was a nice bounce from two to two thirty, and then back down to two and then two thirty, and then up to like two fifty, but then back down to two. I just wasn't sure, you know, and, and if you're not sure, you don't have to trade. Um, you know, morning spikes have been the hottest. So oftentimes you will see me try to play the morning spike. And if I miss it, I'm not going to play it again. Um, it's just that simple. But now the question is, can it spike again? This is day two. Uh, let's, let's, uh, pause it here. And, uh, I'd say me and Tim don't need to both go over it, but is there a, I know you don't like dip buying Tim, but is there a, an approximate between the 40s and 50s, 50s and 60s, you would give this just to see how it pans out. Do you want to give a some sort of small prediction ahead of time, or you, so I you you want to predict what Sykes is? You want me to give an opinion of what he's going to grade? Just this roughly at. on the dip by yeah. No, no, Maybe it'll be fun to do. Okay, go ahead. You introduce it, and then yeah, yep. So okay, we need to go back on the chart. Okay, so th this will be the first kind of me and Tim live predictions. We'll see, we'll see who can get closest to Sykes. I just watched this section a few hours ago, so we'll see who wins. 
Haha, <laughs> just joking. Uh, let's, for me, what kind of grade would I give this? I'll go first, then Tim can go second. We'll see uh, who is the closest to what Sykes is. I guess Sykes, Sykes can have the winning grade. I'd say for me, it's it's a, a very low float. Uh, I can see already it's, it's yesterday it traded quite a lot of volume, but the volume's kind of not quite there pre-market, but it wasn't there pre-market yesterday. But I know around this time, there was a lot of, stocks that ran in the shipping sector might have been hot so the chances of this at least spiking a little bit uh, if you're buying it right at the open i'd say he's going to give this somewhere near between 68 and 72. so so now let me make sure i understand your your criteria you sprung this on me you're asking me to grade this or you're yeah, asking roughly. me to speculate what Sykes will grade it as? Just what would you grade it as? What would you grade it okay, as? Okay, so, so, um, so what do I like about this? It's got news. It's got you know, it's got good volume. It is a low float, but this is not you hit the shit a bus. type of stock I look to buy on day two because of the fact that you know this this was not you know the the pattern I look for on these low floaters into the close that post two p.m. VWAP hold type idea. Now Sykes doesn't have VWAP on the chart right now but i can guess where it would be and you can see what i look for and i'm going to do the hand gestures if you're on youtube i want to see that big spike early i want to see that consolidation like it does i'm sure it consolidated around vwap but then i want to see some sort of volume spike and uh volume as well as price spike into that 2 p.m window that pushes it near at or around the high of the day because that tells me there's buyers coming in the late day. That tells me that there's shorts that are going to be worried about this thing. They're going to be ready to panic on any type of move back through that three level, which would be the previous high of the day from yesterday. This thing, especially at 2 p.m., it did the exact opposite of what I see. You can, and you know, notice it's probably more like 1:45 p.m. on the chart and again go to youtube or go to steady trade and you'll see what i'm looking at this thing's holding vwap starting to perk right into that 2 p.m window and then it just it fails at 250 cracks hard and then more or less closes on the low of the day other than yeah. pre-market this thing's freaking dead meat day two to me without some news so to me unless there's new news today this is like a 30 or a 40 best because the chart the intraday chart yesterday did nothing i want to see on a low float stock this stock closed weak it closed lame dead meat now and I, and I definitely agree with you in the fact that it's extremely weak that it it didn't give back it's it give back pretty much its full gains that day and i know as a general rule you say if a stock gives back more than 50 percent of its spike i mean it's okay it can recover as long as it doesn't give back more than 50 percent of its spike I mean, that's generally the rule I play off. And, and just, to, just to also put into brackets, I am the worst long in the history of traders. But I remember back at this time, a lot of people were looking at day one spikers and looking for them to spike day two as well. And because that was the kind of the pattern at that time, then that's why I've put it in the 65, 66, 67, 68. I'll not go back on it. But I, I totally agree with what you're saying. I think that this chart, this chart now is dead. But I remember a couple of years ago, you were getting day one spike as that failed and that spike day two. But let, let's see how it plays out. I, I can't remember. It's a few years back. And to me, and I know I kind of ranted on it, the key is, you'll hear me say it a million times on Steady Trade and Stocks to Trade Pro, for these, these low float stocks, we love that 2 p.m. window. Now, that doesn't mean precisely 2 p.m. It is a window. We want to see at 145 the exact opposite of what mdgs did now i'm not saying it needs to break that high of the day but look at that kind of 15 20 minute area right on the s on, on the mdgs ticker that is the exact opposite to me that that's that i run to the exits when i see that and that's why i don't chase spikes in the morning as well because you're just like, oh, just chase it. No, it's got to come back. It's got to come back. Didn't come back. Didn't come back. Didn't come back. Anyway, let's see. Let's see uh, how it's rated. I'm interested to see this. So let us analyze it. All right. Pattern price. Um, so this is the hot play right now. You know, morning spikes, low market cap, low float play. 
uh, big volume. It was too quick yesterday. So I will give this an 18. It's nearly a perfect 20. Not quite. Um, because, you know, frankly, it's... God, Tim's disgusted. <laughs> I, would, I would put a decimal point in there. Uh, you know, again, go... You know, and, and remember, everybody is different. You know, you know I, I, I mean, there's millions of traders. There's 16,000 stocks. There's long, there's short, there's options. There's, you know, high price, low price. There's a million different criteria, but go back to my rant. That chart yesterday gets a 1.8 from me it don't it don't get no 18 <laughs> there are a lot of sellers um actually i'm going to even lower this one to 16 because it couldn't really bounce yesterday you know at the market open it would have been a 20 because it would be day one of the news everyone's all excited now day two you have to take a few points off because it couldn't bounce that well uh risk reward Right here at 226, uh, I mean, the bounce goes up to 250. The low is two, so it's mid-range. Uh, so right now at the current price, not great risk-reward. Remember, I don't like trading mid-range. Um, so, you know, it's not terrible. It could very easily go back to 250. Um, but I'll give this uh, an eight right now at a 20. Ease of entry and exit, I mean, as yesterday proved, it was too quick. Um, to get in and, 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 you know, if I had been wrong, it would have been too quick to get out. So I'll give this a five because it's, it's literally moves too quick. Past performance history of spiking. This is a 10 because, you know, yesterday's spike is exactly what you want to see. Uh, again, my personal schedule, I'm totally uh, free, but pre-market right now, I don't want to trade it. Um, so I'm going to give this a, a 12. Uh, the reason catalyst, which is a, a contract winner. Uh, that's a 10 right now. Market environment is 10 for this kind of play. So this is a 71 out of 100. So this is, you know, out of the three stocks that I've analyzed, this, you know, it's not really perfect. Um, and at what time is it? Actually, I should change this to a 10 because I'm not going to trade a pre-market. As we get closer to the market open, this will go up. Um, but still, you know, I, I just want to see an overall range. Oh, what did I just do? If you can't get executed. Um, you know, for, for entry and exit. And it was a good thing that it spiked too quick yesterday because it showed, you know, how much this stock can spike. But it was a bad thing uh, that, you know, I couldn't get executed, first of all, so I couldn't even profit. Um, and secondly, you know, what you have to consider, if you're wrong and if it moves so fast that you can't even get in, or what if it moves so fast and you can't get out? So I consider yesterday's miss in any potential trade today because that's going to influence my thinking because i remember how quick it was yeah so i mean this is not the type of trade i would take at all the reason i think i got pretty close to what tim said is because i've, I've watched it, a lot of the video lessons back in the day to see what he was thinking around this time so i kind of knew how he would grade it but for me uh, the pattern and the price it's it failed yesterday so it's super risky i know back 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 in the day the market environment was hot for these repeat runners but that's why i'd put the 10 under market environment i think the pattern's like a 10. Uh, risk reward it's the risk reward is like a two or a three for me because it's so scary that you're gonna buy and it's just gonna slam back hard on you and you, you don't know which ones are gonna slam back and which ones are not so i don't know how you can really judge your risk reward there Ease of entry and exit, it's easy to get in, but it's very hard to get out. Again, it can slam back on you. Uh, past performance and history of spiking. Yeah, it's ran well before. Uh, it's it's good. It's the market open, the spike at the open. The catalyst is a contract win, so it's 10. But I mean, like I'll grade it different to Tim. T Tim's made millions of dollars now haven't, so maybe he's significantly more qualified than me at this. But the important point is it's just not for me. Like This is not a trade for me, so this is why I give it a lower score. Yeah, and, and, and that's that's the point I want to make, too, is, you know, different strokes for different folks. Cue the producer music. Now the world don't move to the beat of just one drum. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> you know, to me, the the biggest thing that I just, I, I agree with everything else but the two Ps. To me, that pattern, going back to my rant from a few years ago, that is just... And again, this is me. Now, Sykes is a little more prone to dip by. I'm not 
you know, you've heard me say that a million times if you're a long-time listener. I'm just not a big fan of dip buying these sketchy low price stocks. I've seen 10 million of them fail to bounce. I just can't. I want to buy strength. I want to, you know, again, I'll repeat. I want to buy strength. That stock closed weak as heck. So the first P is like a two or a three for me. And then the other one is the second P, the past performance. I mean, you can look, it's going to be small, but behind me, is the long-term chart of MDGS. And this is what I call in in Stocks to Trade Pro, it's a one-and-done chart. This stock has a history of spiking one day and then going nowhere. What are we looking at on MDGS in this example? Day two. It's just, to me, it's just repeating what it's done in the past where it failed to spike on day two. So I give, you know, the second P a two, so now I've rated this thing, what, you know, 20 points lower than Sykes, roughly. I'm too dumb to do the math in my head. But, you know, I go back to my prediction in the beginning. What did I say? 40s or something? And yeah. that's basically where I'm at. You know, I'm at roughly 49 when I deduct a bunch of points on the first P and a bunch of points on the second P. So, and But I that's suppose- me. That's me, you know. No, but and, and that's the other thing, like when you're grading these stocks, you might not be 100% accurate, especially if you're just learning this kind of strategy for the first time. And that's why you should only be trading the, the 75s, 80s, and 90s. Because well, have- and, and that's, I'm, gl- I'm glad you made that point. Remember, save these too. When we talk about reviewing, 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 do these sheets, I mean, I keep all mine. I've got this binder over there. Um... And, and see what happens. I mean, maybe you give this thing a 49 and it spikes 300% and then you be, you need to be like, whoa, you know, maybe I should have, you know, what, what did I misinterpret here? So save these sheets because, you know, it's just like working through algebra problems. I mean, you, you turn it into the teacher, they correct it and you're like, oh, okay, I didn't carry the one or I didn't solve for X, you know. That's how you figure this stuff out. So even if you're wrong, you know, review those. Look back at them a couple days later. Or I would always do, when I was getting started, I was very religious about Friday afternoon reviews. For my, in my business, this is back when I was a part-time trader, Friday afternoons were usually pretty slow. I'd spend an hour or so after the market close looking at stuff I traded and didn't trade and seeing if I was right or wrong. Yeah, and I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll let you close it out, but it's just important to think like these, like there is a lot of chance in stock trading if you trade in the 40s and 50s and 60s rankings. When you when you get a numerical value of 40, 50, 60, yeah, there's a lot of chance you might win, you might lose. It's like 50, 50. But I don't think there is that much uncertainty in the, seven, in the 75s, 80s and 90s. And that's why they are 80s and 90s. There's not that much uncertainty. It's it's a bit of a surprise if, it, if a 90 doesn't go your way. So you really get your skill level up. I think you really get your profitability level up if you've got the discipline to just trade these 80s and 90s. And I mean, it's if you can do that, then you are for sure a profitable trader. If you can have the discipline, which is where I fell down a lot. The, the first thing is recognizing them. Can you accurately recognize an 80? Can you accurately recognize an 85? And the second half, which is just as hard, is do you have the discipline just to trade these 85s? And if you do, I'll put my house on you being a profitable trader. That I don't own. (laughs) (laughs) Right? You agree though, right? No, no. I think that was a good close. Well, because we still got, that was a good ending because now we we still got to grade the stock. So we're not done yet. Hey there, Steady Trade listeners. Want to know how guys like Tim Grittani and Tim Bowen followed in the footsteps of Tim Sykes, earning financial security and beyond by day trading penny stocks? Do you want to see if you have what it takes, even if your name isn't Tim? So- then why not check out the Timothy Sykes Trading Challenge, where you can be personally mentored by these guys and other successful traders. If you're interested, and if you have what it takes, go to timothysykes.com and let them know that you want to work directly with Tim Sykes today.
We're continuing our series reviewing and breaking down trader checklist. We're kind of wrapping up a homework project we gave you from last episode. We're going to, we asked you to review and grade CVSI on August 6th. 2018. Help me out if I got that wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was the Monday last week where we broke this down in Stocks to Trade Pro, and it was, in my opinion, a highly rated setup. So we're going to do that live now to compare your homework. Just a quick little uh, FYI, we did have a little bit of a snafu this episode. We will not have any video of Stephen's hairy armpits and back in this episode. We did have some technical difficulties, so just keep that in mind. We will have the video of Sykes and his charts. You just won't have the video of us kind of reacting to them. Okay, so let's point out, we're looking at August 6th, right? So which day is this? I'm just Right where the crosshair is. Whoop, 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 whoop. Go back. Uh, Just to say, we can see it's a multi-year breakout. We can see it's... So basically, Stephen, where the crosshair is sitting is the day. That's that's the close of the day I wanted to enter this stock and I'll tell you why I like that area so much. So which which way where about see a token? The- 330 right there that where it consolidated and then rebroke yeah. out. So this day? Ye- the day before. This day. That day. Uh, yes, just as, just as yes. it broke out above the red candle. Okay, correct, cool. Correct. So so do we how do you how do you want to do this, Stephen? You want to do each criteria one yes. by one? Let's, let's go one by one, yeah. Okay, let's I like it. Okay. So I'm on the left. I'll, I'll start. So there's many things I like about this stock. I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of a segue. First of all, it's a CVS, uh, or I'm sorry, it's a, it's a cannabis stock. So it's a marijuana related stock. And, um, you know, we've had a lot of recent news in the US. You know, we kind of see this trend towards softening of the legislation of marijuana. We had the recent news with Canada voting to legalize recreational marijuana. I think that's coming up soon, the actual ratification of it. I think it might be like a month or so away. So we've got a good sector, in my opinion. These marijuana stocks haven't been amazing the last year or so. Back in 2015, we had a ridiculous run. I think that was back when Colorado and Washington legalized. But there's also Interesting, this stock was uh, Tim Gratani's biggest single trade profit ever, and he actually traded it back when it went from like a dollar to 250, and I think he made a quarter of a million dollars, and you can see the stock is now at 550, so um, now obviously he wasn't going to hold through that drop when it went back almost to one, but you know, you think about it, if, if Gratani was was long and strong, as they say, he'd be up probably about a million dollars just on this stock. So I've got a lot of things that I like about, we're, we're going to step through the criteria. So what do I like to see here from the pattern? This is a long-term uptrending chart. Love that. This is what I call a strong chart. You can see that for the entire one year, the stock is just constantly grinding higher. Then, thanks to my co-host Steven, you can see this stock has consolidated and rebroke out several times. So when we look for that past performance, that pattern, you can see that back in the one level when Gratani bought, it consolidated for a few days, ripped for a few days. Then you can see at the twos, it consolidated for a few weeks, but then when it hit that 52-week high, it ripped for 50 to 75 cents. Fast forward to where we're looking at the stock, it's now done the same thing. It's consolidated for a week or so. It's hitting that 52-week high into the market close on August 6th. I freaking love stocks hitting 52s, hitting the high of the day post 2 p.m. in a hot sector that have a recent history of breaking out. The great annotation, Stephen. Even though you know, <laughs> usually I'm a, usually, on the goal. <laughs> usually I'm offended by your bo, but in this situation, <laughs> I I do like your bo. So to me, when it comes to the pattern, I mean, I shudder to give you know a perfect score to anything, but but give me an 18 for the pattern and the price. Oh, and also notice Sykes calls it the price. 
I love this price range. I mean, I'll admit, I love two to ten dollar stocks. That is my well, two to twelve. I'd say my favorite price range is two to twelve. This stock, you know, at the day we're looking at it, is a three dollar and thirty cent stock. That's right in the middle of my sweet spot. Yeah, I think for me, I mean, we can see we've got this, this, I mean, it's come from like the 50, 60, 70 cents, is it? but it is an OTC and these OTCs can run and run and run and run. So, but because it's from the 50s and the 60s and then it's run to the twos and then it's dropped back and it's come back again and then it's gone to the threes, I'm thinking this is 50 cents and it's gone up to the threes. What's going on here? I'd probably give it about a 16, not, not so much an 18, but I mean, in hindsight, I look a bit silly because we can see how far it's gone, but I've just got to be honest. Sure. Um, and then when I, I'll, I'll just skip to the next one, I guess we can go back and forth. And when I, when I look at the risk reward, I think if you're buying it literally on this breakout level, say it's broke out and then it's sitting back on the level and it's consolidating. I mean, I think you've got the perfect risk reward there at least though, because it has kind of had its push from the twos to the threes and then it's sat back, it's held the high low and then it's retesting highs again. So it's, it's a really str- it's a good sign of strength. You've got the, the exact 329 level to risk off if you're going to buy there. So, I mean, I'd say if you're buying 330, 335, you're risking five cents and the upside is like $5. We don't know that in, in hindsight, but I, I would definitely give that. It's, it's up a lot, so I'd, I'd, I'd give it a 16 again. So, I'm, uh, I, I mean, I kind of, kind of mirror your comments. My trade plan, which notice I have a trade plan on this, uh, would be a little more... I don't know if I would call it aggressive, but just a little more. I, w- I give stocks like this a little more leeway because I like to target key price levels. So I would be buying at that same level, that high of the day, into the close, that's also a 52-week high, basically 330. I would risk that consolidation area, that second breakout line that Stephen drew, which is also a whole dollar, half dollar, because we know, I mean, you can see the stock consolidated at one, it consolidated at two, it then consolidated at three. I love targeting whole dollar, half dollars, because they tend to become, those are key psychological levels. I mean, think about yourself. You're, if a stock is like, so say I buy in 330 and it fades to 310. Am I panicking? Are you panicking? No. But when it goes to 299, 90% of us are going to get the hell out because now it's that key psychological level. But because of that, those levels can become support. So I would have a more aggressive plan here. I would buy 330. I would risk three. And my goal would be basically three to one risk to reward. So I would love to maybe sell a little above four, which again, obviously this is hindsight trading but it did exactly that. So to me, the risk reward is great. I would give this an 18 as well because I got a key level to key off of. It's a psychological level and this stock has repeated itself at one, at two, and now at three. Hi, this is Aaron, AKA Double A Ron from New York City. And I like to go outside and find a stray dog, preferably an aggressive breed like a pit bull or a Rottweiler. Then I get real close, stare it down eye to eye until it starts to chase me. Then I run, that's right, I run while listening to Steven and Tim on the Steady Trade Podcast. You can register to win real actual prizes at their website, steadytrade.com. And if you really like what you hear, give the podcast a five-star rating and write a glowing review on iTunes. I did, and this is how we say goodbye in New York City.